And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. Father, we give you praise again for the privilege that we have to love you. The privilege that we have to look into your lively oracles to understand your ways. The privilege that we have to be invited into the fellowship of the divine. Lord, we make the most of this opportunity. Lord, for every day in our life is a privilege to invest in eternity. We know the, the, the very essence of time. What an opportunity you've given to us to explore into your depths, to know your ways, to understand your mind and to mingle with you. Father, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise. And even tonight, Lord, as we look upon your words, we receive wisdom, we receive strength, we receive power. Power to reign and to win in this life. To live a victorious life that brings glory to your name. Thank you, Abba Father, because many will be strengthened tonight. Many lives will be recovered. Many hopes will be quickened. Lord, many faiths will be activated. Many giftings will be activated. Lord, many dead situations will be brought back to life. And many opportunities will be realized. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. We are persuaded in our spirits tonight that you will yet again do great and mighty things amongst us. Take all the praise. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's such a great honor to be here your way once again tonight. I believe you are going to learn something tonight again that you will add to your quiver as you make your headway in life. It's important for us to understand that in this life we must be victorious in this life we must we must be victorious the bible said as many as have received the gift of righteousness shall reign in life pastor chris we calls it shall king in life and that's the plan of god for every one of us from the, the the beginning of all things god created us to have dominion bible says in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 he said let us make man in our image after our likeness and he said let them have dominion so we were brought here to rule we were brought here to reign and this evening by the special grace of god somebody is receiving the capacity and the ability the wisdom the understanding the light required to reign in life by the glory of god and the father will be glorified even by our reigning life in the name of the lord jesus you know the bible is so it's such a fascinating book it brings us the mind of God and in the mind of God we understand the plan of God for us and we don't only understand the plan of God for us we understand the strategies of the spirit that are set in place for us to realize that godly plan and glory to God the plans of God for us they are good and not of evil to give us a hope and a future the plans of God for us are unto a reigning life the life of dominion and absolute victory is said to the man in Genesis 1:28 after he had blessed them he said be fruitful he said multiply he said replenish he said subdue he said have dominion it's victory on every side and tonight we are going to learn the strategies of the spirit that makes for that victorious life because that's the plan of god from the beginning and that's the plan of god even unto the end unto the end is always a life of perpetual victory a life of perpetual dominion and this evening i'm excited in my spirit because somebody is living here to live the life of dominion by the power of the holy spirit tonight i want to share with us what i have tagged the principles of faith you know i began last week by teaching on the subject the way of faith the way of faith i said it's very important and um, just as a way of recap i said that um, faith is that divine element imparted into our spirit in order to bring the power of creation because i said faith creates i said faith creates and that is why faith is 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 is, is very useful and always expedient when we want to bring dead situation back to life 
when we want to bring impossible, make impossible situation possible, when we make the, want to make the unseen, seen, unreal, real, the only agency for making that possible is faith because faith is create, creative. It's a force of God that makes creation possible. And everyone that has received that impartation of faith has the power to create. That power to create is what makes impossible possible. That power to create is what makes invincible visible. It's what makes the unreal real. And it's important for us to understand that that's the plan of God for our everyday life. So first I said faith is a divine element in our spirits that gives us the power to create. And then secondly, I said the faith that we have is the same faith that God has. The faith that we have is the faith of God. I said that's the faith the apostles walked with. That's the faith Jesus walked with. And that's the faith that we have. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1, Peter said, I write unto you, brethren, that have like precious faith. Like precious faith. That means Peter was saying, the faith that I have is the faith that you have. And Paul took it to the zenith. In Galatians 2.20, he said, the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the faith Paul has, which is the faith you and I have, is the faith of the Son of God. And the faith of the Son of God is the faith of God. That's the same faith that stood when darkness was upon the face of the earth and said, let there be light. In fact, the Hebrew word is so graphic in painting this. It said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. And it said, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The word is bohu, tohu. It means there was emptiness, there was nothingness. And there was not just emptiness, there was vanity, there was waste. And there was not just waste and decadence, there was a force against the force of God that controlled the earth. But the emptiness, the vanity, the waste, the forces against the force of God counted for nothing the moment faith was activated. He said, let there be light. And there was light. So faith creates. Faith is a creative force. And every one of us that has faith has the power inherent in our spirit for bringing dead situation back to life. That means when situations are hopeless, we are not hopeless. When situations are dead, we are not confused. The reason is because the power at work in us is activated when it becomes hopeless. That's why you cannot see the glory of light in light. You see the glory of light in darkness. When there is darkness, that's when light becomes glorious. So dead situation gives us the opportunity to manifest the God class of life, the God kind of life. And that's what faith has come to do for us. But I said in our last class, that um, even though this is what it is, it's important for us to understand that there is a definite protocol that governs the operation of faith. And the first I said is called the way of faith. The way of faith is not primarily about results. The way of faith is primarily about making, the making of the man of faith. Because it's the man of faith that produces the result. So for the man of faith to be made, he has to, un to understand and conform to the way of faith. And I said, the way of faith is, in the most graphic sense, is outlined in Romans chapter 4 from verse 19 to 21. The Bible said concerning Abraham, it said, Who against hope believed in hope that he will be the father of many nations, even as he has spoken, by thy seed, by thy seed shall the nations be made. And he said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving thanks to God, and being persuaded, being persuaded, being persuaded that him who have spoken is able to bring to pass what he has said. And I said there are four things that makes for the way of faith. Every faith man lives according to the demands of the way of faith. And I said the first thing is to be persuaded. The Bible says Abraham was persuaded. And I said persuasion it's only possible when there is a reference. You cannot be persuaded a man is a good man until you have seen something the man has done that is good. You cannot be persuaded that the man is a bad man until you have seen something bad that the person has done. So I said persuasion is built upon references. So I said it's important for us to have references that makes for God's perso for divine persuasion in our spirit. And I said that, that reference is predicated upon what we know from the word of God and then our track records in God's dealing with us. And I said when that begins to happen, we know two dimensions of God. The first dimension of God we know is that God is truth. What it means is that 
God's reality exists the natural reality. So the natural reality may be saying something else, but what God says is what is real because God is truth. A man can have sickness all over him, but God says by his stripes you are healed. If you look at that man in reality, the man is healed. Now when you know the man is healed, then you are bold enough to bring that healing that is his spiritual reality into his natural reality because his natural reality is a lie. Let God be true and all men liars. So if you are persuaded in God on the strength of your referencing God by his scripture and by his track record, you are going to know the first dimension of God that God is truth. And if God is truth, that means what God says is what you believe. Secondly, you are going to know another dimension of God called the faithfulness of God. Because you know God is faithful, you can stake your life. That's why God said to Peter, come. And Peter could walk on water because God is faithful. What it means is that what God says, God is committed to performing it. So if God says you are healed, if you dare to believe it, God who said you are healed will make you healed. If you look at Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 4 to 5, he said he was wounded for our transgression. Five particularly now. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. Now God said it. Everybody that believed it, God came to make that real. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 16, he said himself, he said that it may be fulfilled rather, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He said himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He said on the strength of that prophetic word, Jesus went about healing the sick. So the reason Jesus went about healing the sick was not only because he had compassion for the sick, it was because he had declared that by his stripes they were healed. So he said on the strength of that prophetic word, Jesus was compelled to heal the sick. And in verse 17 he said, when the evening was come, they brought all that were sick to him that he might heal them. And he said they touched him and he healed them all. Why? That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. He himself took our infirmities. That is the faithfulness dimension of God. Whenever God speaks, God is committed to bring it to pass. But it takes a man of persuasion to see God's faithfulness. So persuasion helps us to understand two dimensions of God. The truth dimension of God and the faithful dimension of God. I also showed us a scripture in Genesis chapter 18. The Bible says God said to Abraham in verse 10 and in verse 14, In the next time of life I will visit you and Sarah your, child, your wife will be with child. Abraham had already been persuaded because in Genesis 15 verse 5 and 6 he said Abraham looked at the stars he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness so Abraham was already persuaded now because Abraham was persuaded and that's what Paul was quoting in Romans chapter 4 verse 21 he said God returned in Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 according as he has said he said God returned as he has said and he visited Sarah as he has said and Sarah was with child Sarah was with child. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible said, By faith, Sarah received strength that she should be with child. Why did he, will she receive that strength? Because God will be faithful. So God imparted strength into Sarah. Even though Sarah was barren, God kept to his word because Abraham was persuaded. So I said the first principle of faith is the principle of persuasion. So every believer must make it a point of duty to make sure there are enough references in every area of his life in order to be persuaded in God. The moment you do that, you are going to see everything God says come to pass. Why? Because God is truth and because God is faithful. And I said the second thing about the principle of faith is that you don't consider the, the circumstances. He said, Abraham did not consider his body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Romans chapter 4 verse 19. He did not consider his body dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, what does that mean? That does not mean Abraham was negligent. That does not mean Abraham was oblivious of his circumstances. But what it meant is that Abraham chose to put his focus on what God said. He didn't put his focus on his circumstance. The reason is because if you put your focus on your circumstance, your circumstance will create a thought in your mind. 
and that thought will become your imagination that imagination will become your desire or your expectation and the moment it becomes your expectation it must become your reality that's how things are formed from the spirit realm to the natural realm first is a thought then it's an imagination then it's either a desire or an expectation the moment it becomes a desire or an expectation it must be born so when you refuse to consider your circumstance but you set your focus on what God has said a thought will crystallize in your spirit that thought that crystallizes in your spirit will eventually become your imaginations and your contemplations the moment it becomes your imaginations and contemplations that means you are forming a mental picture about it it will now become either your desire or your expectation the moment it becomes your expectation every force in God will bring it to pass it will become your reality so the second thing about the principle of faith is that you don't consider your circumstances and then the third thing about the principle of faith is that you lay hold on the promises what has God said you hold on to it you grip it the Greek word is katalambano it means take hold and make a personal possession so Abraham laid hold on what God said he held it he said he was not weak in faith he did not stagger at the promises of God through unbelief Abraham refused to stagger he refused to stagger so men of faith refused to stagger the thing may last but he said weeping may endure for the night he said but joy cometh in the morning so while you are at night you are not you are not dissuaded while you are at night you are not confused while you are at night you are not afraid why because you know the darkest hour of the night is the same moment that daybreak begins so the moment it looks as if it is hopeless the moment it looks as if it's dark that's when light begins to come forth because light will surely come the night is a testimony that light is on the way that the morning will soon break without night there will be no morning so when you go through the worst circumstance you are persuaded that's why the psalmist said even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why was he not afraid it's not just because he is bold I fear no evil because thou art with me. The confidence of the man was informed from something. What is that confidence? What God said. What God said. He said it's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. He said he will do what he has said. And God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he said to Abraham and he did it. If he said to Paul and he did it. If he said to Peter and he did it. When he says to Michael, he will do it. Because he will never change. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. That's why in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. He said, though the fig tree might not blossom. The labor of the olive might fail. There may be no heads in the stock. He said, yet will I believe in the Lord the Lord God of my salvation because he is my strength he will cause my feet to be like hinds feet and he will make me to walk in my high places you don't get there overnight you get there by joining from persuasion by putting your affection not on your circumstance but on what the Lord said by holding on to what God said and I said finally the principle of faith is such that it requires that we give glory to God so you are going through pain you are saying thank you Lord Jesus you don't know why but you are giving glory to God the moment you are able to do this you have become a man of faith and a man of faith is a man whose foundation is in God it's like Mount Zion that cannot be moved in Acts chapter 16 Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into the prison and the Bible said when it was midnight he said Paul and Silas prayed and sang and the prisoners heard them and suddenly he said the, the angel of the Lord came down the foundation of the prison was shaken and the prison doors opened the prison doors will never open until you become a man of faith when they began to give glory to God suddenly the prison door opened what opened the prison door it was their persuasion it was their refusal to consider their circumstances it was their holding on to what god said and then it was their giving glory to god i said this will make you to become another man this is how god operates the bible said in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and suddenly he said the earth was void darkness was upon the face of the deep god was not moved god hovered upon the water he said the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep and God said and God said let there be light and God said what kind of being is this is a faith being if you want to find out if you are truly an offspring of God one of the proofs is that you must be a faith being 
and to become a faith being you must be a man that works by the principles of faith what's the problem of many believers the problem of many believers is that they violate certain segments of the principles of faith there are certain people who are persuaded but they don't give glory to god so they know nothing will happen to them they know they will go through this but they don't give glory to god and because they don't give glory to god they don't activate the power now there are some who are giving glory to god but are not persuaded so they are giving thanks to god what are you are you sure god will do it today we don't know whether god will do it or not but we are hopeful that god will do it that's not a man of faith you don't conflict any of these things all of it must be kept you must be persuaded in god you must not put your attention on the circumstance you must lay hold on the promises of god and you must give glory to god if you do these four things whether the foundations of the earth shift from their course you will not fail the bible said give a portion to step you know not the evil that will come upon the earth what? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 5 what god is telling us is that there are a kind a species of people that can live victorious in this world even if the foundation of the earth were to crumble even if everything were to fail these ones will succeed because their root is not in the natural their root is in the spirit this is the way of faith so brothers and sisters make sure make sure as you go through life every day you refuse to be persuaded by things make sure you are persuaded only by god number two make sure you refuse to consider your circumstance the devil will try to make you consider your circumstance refuse to be moved refuse to be moved and then thirdly make sure there is a scripture that is your anchor every day every day if it doesn't come to your spirit naturally go and open the bible and look for it I want, I want a breakthrough. I'll go and search my concordance and find out a scripture that talks about breakthrough. I will keep that scripture in my heart until that scripture will become part of me. And then breakthrough will become natural. And then finally, even when I'm in the bus, oh, glory to God, I'm the victory that the world is waiting for. I'm the light that the world is waiting for. I'm the next thing that is about to happen. It doesn't matter where I am. I will shake this world. When you keep this in your spirit and you alter it, my brother, the powers of the divine will be released in your favor this is the principle of faith every high flyer in life know this thing i'm telling you and they practice it on a daily basis and this is the foundation of our faith work and i said this is not necessarily for resort it impacts on the it's primarily primarily to build the man of faith. to build the man of faith and tonight, I want to take it a step further by teaching us another very beautiful thing. You see, the thing about victory in life is that God makes it so simple so that even the babe in Christ will have victory. Even the babe. For example, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus sent them out and they were babes. He sent them out to cast the devils to give sleep to raise the dead. They were babes. Why is that so? Because matters of life, God doesn't want us to struggle in matters of life. So he makes the principles of victorious living simple so that even the babe will survive. And the Bible said they went to different terrains and they cast out devils, they healed the sick, and when they returned, they were happy. And Jesus said that's not the testimony. He said, rejoice not that the devils are subject to you, but rejoice that today your names are written in the book of life. And Jesus made sure he painted the picture for us to see. He said, I thank you, Father, that you have revealed these things to babes. He gave authority to babes. The reason is because if God is waiting for you to be fully mature, the devil will lick you up. The devil will kill you. He will make a mess of you. So most times, people think the things that make for victorious living are deep mysteries so they are looking for something very deep to make things happen no 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 brothers and sisters the easiest in life are the things that make for victory and that's why the most simplistic part of the gospel is what makes for victorious living there are depths in god there are mysteries in god but those are made for intimacy they are designed for people who want to explore god victory in life is so simple that even the least among us can walk in victory and they are by these very simple principles you will see them if you consider them at face value you will be going through your struggle for a long time 
But if you receive this truth and practice them, you will be amazed how life will become so easy. The, the Bible says to be careful so that you are not beguiled the same way the serpent beguiled Eve by the simplicity of the gospel. Be careful to hold on to the simplicity of the gospel lest you are beguiled like the serpent beguiled Eve. Most times for some of us who God has blessed with a little understanding here and there about few mysteries in the kingdom when we are teaching and we are not talking about mysteries people think oh this is not strong meat this is the real strong meat i'm telling you if you see someone with cancer you will realize that your mystery can't handle it is these basic things that deal with cancer if you see someone struggling with breakthrough he's in poverty for 20 years your mystery will not handle it is these basic things that handle it this is why a large number of people suffer this is why a large number of people struggle because they trivialize the things meant for their victory but you are not going to trivialize it in the name of the lord jesus as you receive this truth you are going to receive it with meekness you are going to receive it with meekness to bring you salvation you are going to receive this truth with joy so that its powers will be revealed through your life everyone listening to me today is set up for a victorious life and every one of you the testimony the life the, the essence of your life will change in a short period of time tonight in another 15 minutes i'm so excited about what i'm sharing i play with these things i'm telling you the truth i play with this thing these things are, are my daily contemplation this is how i live my life i slept very late last night so i woke up at about 7 a.m and then i got a message on my phone i think about 709 one of my daughters in in asaba she she had been in labor for for over a, almost two days or so now and then she sent me the message oh dad, daddy i'm going through labor the child is not coming out she was so perturbed and instantly the holy ghost moved in my spirit pray now pray now pray now i wanted to say okay just give me a few seconds let me put myself to he said pray now and i carried the phone and i called her immediately and i decreed i said sarah receives strength to be with child receives strength in the name of the lord jesus and i said child your time has come therefore come out i prayed for her at 7 34 8 a.m on the dot the baby came out why principles of faith i wasn't feeling an anointing on my head i wasn't feeling fire on my finger no pray now child come out and the child heard me because that child is a living being remember the bible said we were created by the word of god we were created we were designed to be responsive to the word of god the, you respond to the word of god you are created by the word of god every time the word of god goes for there are elements in your being that respond to the word of god because you were created by the word of god this is why you are a faith being the reason you are not getting the result is because you are not putting the word of god to work my emphasis in this class is to get somebody crazy about the word of god that you will dare anything with the word of god and you will begin to see amazing and extraordinary results i taught this simple facts on my mentoring platform and novices novices i mean novices who have never won a soul before i mean you know if somebody have never won a soul that means that person literally have not put the word of god to work in any aspect of their lives somebody who has never won a soul one of her in south africa she went out did an outreach in a block a cement industry she gathered young street people these are not church people street people she gathered them and then she shared this principle with them she prayed with them somebody who was on pop legs broken their bones were healed instantly and one person was healed of deafness Te over 30 persons gave their heart to christ and she said what's this is this how simple this is i said yes this is how simple it is when it has to do with manifestation god makes it so simple so that everybody can walk in it that's why i said do not give the children's food to dogs he was talking about healing that means healing is the children's bread manifestation is the children's bread it's not for men of stature in the kingdom it's not for prophets it's not for apostles it's not for pastors and teachers it's for every believer who would dare to put their faith to work this is what i'm teaching these principles and i'm teaching them passionately and tonight having taught the way of faith i want to teach you about the principles of faith and there are five basic principles i want to share with you today i pray that as you hear this you will not only hear it but you will begin to put it to work from this night you will be so amazed what god will do with you you will be so amazed i have testimonies every day i'm telling you the truth i lie not god is my witness i have testimonies every day 
it's not a special thing for me it's not a special i have testimonies every day the same way the brethren came to jesus and he said rejoice not that the devils are subject to you but rather that your name is written in the book of life i don't rejoice again over certain things i give glory to god because that's part of the principles of faith but it's a normal thing in my life and it can be a normal thing for anybody who will dare contemplate this and put it to work what are the principles of faith principles of faith number one focus on reality i've shared that already focus on reality what does that mean it means your your attention your focus should not be on the physical happenings but it should be on the power the spiritual essence of the physical happening what i'm trying to say is that see the unseen if you are able to focus on reality you will discover that the natural was designed to conform to reality the natural has its roots in reality the natural has its root in the invincible the natural has its root in the unseen so if you can pay attention to the unseen you will change circumstances any day any time god had told abraham at the age of 75 to come out of his country genesis 12 from verse 1 to 3 out of his kindred out of his father's house to the land that he will show him and god went further to say in blessings i will bless you and the point came abraham obeyed god and left but after a while abraham began to lament that I do not have anyone to inherit my, my goods except this Eliezer of Damascus. And God had told him he would bless him in all things. So God told Abraham he would give him a child. And he said he would be a father of many nations. And Abraham could not believe. Abraham struggled with this for 25 years. And God called Abraham. In Genesis 15 from verse 5 to 6, he took Abraham out. And he wanted to help Abraham to look away from the natural. And he said, look into the stars of heaven. He said, as numerous as these stars are, so shall thy seed be. Now, when Abraham looked at this myriad of stars, for the first time it dawned on Abraham that what God was talking about was bigger than everything around him. So Abraham had to shift his focus from the natural to the supernatural. And the Bible said in verse 6 that an Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God for the first time shifted his gaze from the natural to the supernatural Abraham shifted his focus from his circumstance to God if our focus is in the circumstance if our focus is in the natural we can never generate the power to cause changes so the first principle of faith is that you don't focus in the natural you focus in the supernatural so Abraham believed God it was counted to him for righteousness in Joshua chapter 6 verse 2 God had told Joshua to conquer Jericho now the war of Jericho is an impregnable fortress you can't conquer that city in fact we were told by church history that six war horses could run comfortably on the wall of Jericho how do you surmount such an impregnable fortress Joshua was contemplating everything that was natural which strategy is going to work how do i do this how do i do this and suddenly he saw an angel of the lord stood with his sword drawn out and the angel of the lord began to salute him thou mighty man of valor and for the first time he downed on joshua am i a mighty man am i a man of valor by what means it's obviously not based on my natural ability because this salutation if it is based on my natural ability i don't qualify how can you look upon me and call me a mighty man of valor? It's not possible. By what means? And the angel began to draw him to himself. Now, if you stop looking at the circumstance and begin to look Godward, for the first time you are going to notice there is an ability that is in you that will begin to manifest. The power of God that is hid in the God on your inside. So, in 2 Corinthians 4.18, it said, Why we look not at the things which are seen, but are the things which are unseen. He said the things which are seen, they are temporal. The things that are unseen, they are eternal. What is he trying to tell us? Every natural thing is a lie. It is built on the foundation of vanity. Everything that you see in the natural is built on the foundation of vanity. 
the only things that are eternal are the things built in the spirit now if i talk about the spirit somebody is now contemplating do i close my eyes and become quiet to see into the spirit or do i see an angel that's not what i'm talking about if i say look at the spirit there is one spirit substance that is available to everybody it's called the word of god why is that so the bible said all things were created by the word all things both invincible and visible in colossians chapter 1 from verse 16 to 22 it said both visible and invisible things have one raw material it's called the word of god in hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to, 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 to from hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 rather it said god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets as in this last day spoken to us by his son who being the brightness of his glory the express image of his person sustaining all things by the word of his power he said who by himself give me a second i want to quote every word of that scripture because i want to make a definite reference a definite reference to help someone because most times when we say look into the spirit people are closing their eyes trying to see some things in the spirit he said who by himself self have preserved have have kept have strengthened have have sustained all things by the word of his power so everything that is kept everything that is sustained he said is by the word by the word of his power and if you look at hebrews 11 verse 3 he said through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of god that the things which are seen were not made from the things which are or the things we do appear so when we are talking about the invincible we are talking primarily about the work that created the invincible realm so if you can look at the word you're already looking at the invincible realm and if you look at the world long enough the invincible realm will begin to crystallize in your spirit man so the first principle of faith is for you to refuse to look at the circumstance for example a growth may be coming out of your body you can choose to look at that growth and you can choose not to look at that growth and find out what the invincible is saying and what the invincible will be saying is that by his stripes you were healed what the invisible will be saying is that if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. Now, what you are seeing there is the logos, right? So, why I say focus now is because I'm not saying take the logos and just quote it. You may not get the results. But when you focus on it over time, something happens. The Holy Ghost begins to animate from your spirit. So, it will no longer be what you are reading. It will now become the lively oracles of God coming out from within your spirit. If you don't focus on the benefit of the when you begin the word of God, you are beginning to make your way prosperous. In Joshua chapter 1 from verse 8, it said, This book of the law should not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. Thou shalt see that you do that which is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success so the foundation in the principle of faith is that you focus on the invincible and when i say focus on the invisible i say focus on what god says and when i say focus on what god says i mean look upon the logos eat the logos meditate the logos until the rema begins to come out of your spirit the moment the rema begins to come out of your spirit you are about to begin to create you have just entered the, the class of create creators you have just entered the god class because anything altered by the rema must come to pass whether the hordes of Hades gather against it it can't stop it the first principle of faith is that you must master how to focus on the invincible if you can focus on the invincible your result will be your portion this is what the bible said concerning abraham in romans chapter 4 verse 1 he said what did abraham our father according to the flesh find what has he found what Abraham found was the way of faith. What Abraham found was the principles of faith. And the first principle of faith is to focus on the invincible. So in Romans chapter 4 verse 17, the Bible began to tell us how Abraham walked. In Romans 4 17, he said concerning Abraham, he said, as it is written, 
I have made thee a father of many nations before whom before him whom he believed, even God, that quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though, as though they were. He said, Therefore, against believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to according to according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be so his faith was not according to anything else but according to what was spoken that was abraham focusing on the invincible realm he was focusing on what God said. What God said was not visible. What God said was not feasible. What God said was seemingly impossible. But he focused on it. Because he knew that was where his strength came from. We are not earthly beings. We are heavenly beings. This is why we must focus on heavenly things. This is why we must focus on the invincible dimension. That's where our victory is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 45. The Bible began to teach us something. Because this thing is possible for every man. It said concerning Adam, the first Adam. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 45. The Bible said, As and so it is, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last man Adam was a spirit. You see what happens? When you focus on the spirit, when you focus on the invincible, there is a quickening dimension that that realm brings your way. If you focus on the earthly, you will only have the spiritual results around you because it's a living soul. But the second man, the realm of the second man is the realm that... And it didn't stop there. It said, how be, how be it? That was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual is that the first man is earth is of the earth, earthy. So everything of the earth is earthy. He said, but the but the last man is the Lord from heaven. He said, as is the earthy, such are they also which are earthy. But as is the heavenly, such are they which are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, so we should also bear the image of the heavenly. So what is he telling us? We must come to a point where we realize that we are spiritual beings. We must come to a point where we realize that we are heavenly beings. Our source is not earthly. So we are not bound by the powers of the natural. There is another dimension to us that is heavenly. So every time we want to deal with a circumstance, we focus on that superior and superlative dimension of our being, which is of the spirit. So we focus there. Every faith man and every man who walks by the principles of faith focuses on the heavenly. I travel a lot. I go to different territories every day. I meet different people with different backgrounds, different orientation, but my results are constant. Because I don't look at the people. You go to certain places, you are preaching, and then the people are sleeping on you. You go to certain places, you are preaching, and they act as if, who is this? What is he talking about? Some of them are repelling you on the altar. While you are talking, their thoughts are attacking you. They are doing all kinds of things. Sometimes when you are even preaching, they are standing up and walking out as though you are making noise. But we are not moved. We know what we came with is heavenly. So the people in Niger cannot undermine it. The people in Enugu cannot un undermine it. The people in Ghana cannot undermine it. It doesn't matter the territory. I came with something that is heavenly. And if I focus there, I can change things anywhere. You know, if you are a pastor or you have a work, your people can be used to you. So it's easy. You can come and you share things. You move in the power of God with ease. Why? You have already taught them the word of God. Their spirit is open. But not for a traveling minister. You must carry something that is heavenly. If I were pastoring a people, I can teach them about the power of God. I can teach them about the move of God. And they can become receptive to the move of God. So I can just take my handkerchief, wave it. They are under the power. I've already taught them. They know how to receive. But if you go to a hinterland when they don't know you, you must focus the heavenly. You must carry something that is superior to any realm in the natural. 
and the way you operate like that is when you focus on the unseen i learned it from pastor chris Akilome. he said carry the divine presence to the nations of the world demonstrating the character of the spirit you are not moved by the people you carry the divine presence take it to the nations of the world when you get there you will demonstrate the character of the spirit why is it possible because we focus on the unseen that's the first principle in the operation of faith the second principle in the operation of faith is to refuse doubt doubt will always attack you your first attack is not from the environment your first attack is from within you doubt is your first enemy if you want to walk in faith the first enemy of the man of faith is not the devil the first enemy of the man of faith is not the environment the first enemy of the man of faith is the doubt within his spirit if he doesn't conquer that doubt he can never conquer anything else but if he's able to defeat his first enemy which is the doubt in his spirit or in his soul even if the devil rose against him he can neutralize the devil any day any time so we must refuse to doubt the bible said in isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11 he said as the rain cometh down and watereth the earth and returneth not but giveth seed to the sower and bread to the eater he says so shall my word be which is gone forth out of my lip it shall not return to me void but it shall perform that for which it is said what is god telling us here god is telling us we don't have any reason to doubt why because he has invested his integrity on the matter god is telling you my integrity is on the matter i decided to put my integrity on the line i am the lord i fail not i faint not my integrity is on this matter so if you have any reason to doubt don't look at yourself look at me i said it imagine if the president of your country sent you on an errand and the president of your country said if you go there just speak just speak i am with you my integrity is on the matter even if the governor of a state stamps of you we refuse to doubt why is that so because you know the one that sent you the cure to doubt is to realize that every step of faith taken the integrity of god is the bedrock the bedrock for faith operation is the integrity of god it's not how loud we say what we say it's not how excellent we say what we say it's not how persuasive we say what we say it is the fact that what we say anchors on the integrity of god i may not believe in myself i may not trust myself but i believe in god and if i do that i will always not doubt the cure to doubt is what i'm sharing with you now if you don't doubt then you can bet what you want salvation comes when we deal with doubt the bible said in romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 if you believe in your heart the lord jesus and confess with your mouth you will be saved he said with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that means what catapults you into the experience for which you desire is the proclamation that aligns with the conviction if that proclamation aligns with aligns with your conviction and it is verbalized it catapults you into the experience that is desired this is the principle of faith and the reason it works is because the integrity of god is on the matter now in dealing with the subject of doubt there are two kinds of doubt that will attack you there is a doubt in your mind the reason is because you are a reasonable being you are a rational being you are an objective being so even when you take a step of faith your mind will want to argue the matter because your mind is programmed to deal with facts not spiritual realities so your mind may want to reason with it now the principle of faith negates that what you do should be repeated the reason you want to repeat it is because your mind is fighting you and i will show you there are many times in scriptures where prayers are repeated the prayers that are repeated the steps that are repeated are prayers of petitions or prayers of intercession and they have different principles that govern it i taught that in my mentoring class and my mentees to online they know what i'm saying for example jesus prayed in matthew chapter 26 verse 39 and 42 he repeated the prayer why because that's a prayer of petition that's not a prayer of faith right so we can repeat prayers of petition we can receive prayers of 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 of, of intercession but when you are dealing with the prayer of faith it is such that when you declare you are persuaded that it's already done when god said let there be light he didn't say it twice 
when God said let the dry ground appear he didn't say it twice when God said let us make man in our image he didn't say it twice he was operating purely by faith in that realm but when God said if it were thy will let this cup pass me by he was not dealing with faith. he was dealing by principle of intercession and the reason you know it's not faith is because in the principle of faith you don't talk to God you talk to the mountain so Jesus was talking to the father he wasn't talking to the mountain so that was intercession that was petition and if you are dealing with intercession and petition you can repeat it but when it comes to faith the reason you want to repeat it is because doubt is beginning to arise in your mind that's called the doubt of the mind the way to deal with the doubt of the mind is not to pray the prayer again it's not to talk to the mountain again it's to talk to the doubt you don't talk to the mountain again you talk to the doubt in 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 5 the Bible said something it said let me read it 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 5 he said for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal he said they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds now he began to teach us how to deal with doubt he said casting down imaginations the word imagination is logismos and what does it mean it means reckoning it means reasoning it means computation so when you deal with the mountain naturally your mind will want to logismos your mind will want to contemplate your mind will want to reason it out he said cast it down he said cast it down imaginations don't cast the mountain again cast the imagination cast the doubt <gasps> I dealt with the cancer, I rebuked the cancer, and my mind is telling me, pray again. Oh, that one you did, you have to clear again, you have to decree again. I command my doubt, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. I deal with the doubt, I don't deal with the mountain. It's a casting down imagination and every high thing that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How do you deal with the doubt of the mind? He said to address the doubt. Cast it down. So when I begin to feel like, ah, this thing will kill me, I say, I will not die. Get behind me, Satan. I will not die. I will live to proclaim the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm addressing the doubt. I won't go back and say, ah, 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 ah. No, no, no. I won't go back and say, I command this, I command this cancer. Go. I command this lung disease. Go. No. I have commanded it and I'm thanking God. What do you do between the time of your manifestation and the time of your prayer? Oh, thank you, Father. Because that which you have said, you are able to perform. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because you are already working on this thing to bring it to pass. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Because the cancer is dissolving. Because the, 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 the high blood pressure is going. Because the migraine is going. That's what you do. You don't keep repeating yourself. If you do it over time, you will tell yourself it's not working. Because it's a, a game of the mind. So when those doubts begin to arise, deal with the doubt. And the way to deal with the doubt of the mind is to cast it down cast it down cast it down cast it down that's one the second way to deal with doubt of the mind is to pray through in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 he said be anxious for nothing but by all things with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made unto God and the peace of God that surpasses knowledge will garrison your heart it will garrison your heart it will garrison your heart it will garrison your heart the peace of God that surpasses knowledge it will garrison your heart. Do you see that? So, two ways to deal with doubt of the mind is what? Rebuke the doubt or cast it down. And then secondly, pray through. When you ascend so high, the doubt will not get there. You would have dealt with the doubt. So, the second law or the second principle rather of faith is what? Refuse doubt. There is another level of doubt that is worse than the doubt of the mind. It's called the doubt of the spirit. And the doubt of the spirit is to stagger at the word of God. When you doubt in the spirit, what you do is that you immobilize God. You weaken God. You make it impossible for God to bring his word to pass. In James chapter 1 from verse 5, the Bible said, Whoever lacks wisdom should ask of God that giveth liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. He said, but let him that ask it, let him that but let him ask in faith 
nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed he said for let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord let not that man think so the reason the man cannot receive is because he wavered he staggered is the doubt of the spirit when you are you have you have asked for something or you have made a demand you have made a decree and then you realize that you are beginning to shake you know that your spirit is beginning to stagger you are doubting in your spirit man you are wavering you are wavering and he said abraham staggered not at the promises of god so how do you deal with the doubt of the spirit how do you deal with stagger two ways by giving glory to god or by exercising your faith when i started praying for the sick i prayed for some they died i prayed for some it grew worse there were times when i left i didn't come back and i told myself oh boy this thing i won't do it again but i began to study and i began to learn from men that know truth see every dimension of my life i have a mentor when it has to do with manifesting the supernatural i follow pastor chris closely closely because he has results i listened to benny him benny him said pastor benny said he was praying for somebody he was ministering to the person every day and then he came pastor chris came to visit him in california and then they were they were they were going to visit billy graham of blessed memory and then he said come let's pass through um this place where i've been ministering to this person this dear sister trusting god for her healing and he said suddenly pastor chris came and looked at her and said leave her now and the demon left her and the sister got up and pastor benny said how in heaven's name did you do it this is how i learned it from him and i am practicing it and i'm growing by it every day i'm growing by it and i'm putting it to work every day this is what you should learn this is what we call the way of the spirit you learn these things you grow in it the bible said in hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 it said whoever uses milk is a babe and is unskillful in the word of righteousness he said but strong meat belongs to them who are of age who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern between good and evil the way to become strong and to stop staggering is by putting your faith to work when you pray for the cripple in the public they are not healed don't be ashamed when you see another cripple pray again when you see another cripple pray again thomas edison was the one that said every time he designed the bulb and it didn't work he learned another way by which the bulb doesn't work so he learned something else you never lose by putting your faith to work every time you put your faith to work you refuse to stagger there are many people because they are afraid of what people will say they never graduate from staggering and the reason is because they never exercise their faith exercise your faith and fail publicly because the shame is not on you the same way if it works the glory is not yours the glory is God's if the glory is not yours why do you claim the shame this is the cure to staggering the cure to staggering is to put your faith to work every morning if you want to trust God for for for, for growing in the healing anointing or the gift of faith you don't do it by only meditating on scripture you have to pray for the sick every day of your life Todd White said he prayed for many people nothing happened until one day he broke open today Todd White goes to a basketball match they stop the match he prays for the sick they are healed it's not a big deal he throws away terrible things in righteousness happening why because he no longer staggers so refuse to doubt when doubt of the mind comes cast it down or pray through when doubt of the spirit comes and you find yourself staggering give glory to God or put your faith to work pray for another person pray for another person pray for another person over time you will discover you will say it waking up from sleep and you will have an answer over time you'll be you'll be going to your bathroom and they will call you somebody is dying you take your phone leave and don't die and you will go and something will happen this is how we grow this is how we grow this is how we grow it is the principle of faith that the man must refuse to doubt because reasonings will come traditions of men will come thoughts will come imaginations will come refuse cast them down tell your fear fear in the name of jesus go tell that thought it will not work in the name of the lord jesus i rebuke you the bible said something in mark chapter 11 verse 22 
that Jesus on their way to Jerusalem, he saw a fig tree and he went to get some figs and there was no fig on the fig tree. And Jesus said, and the Bible said, and Jesus answered, no man will eat of thee. What was Jesus answering to? The fig tree was dumb. Who was Jesus talking to? Jesus was dealing with doubt within. And when Jesus said, no man will eat of thee, the fig tree was still green. The next day when they were coming, I knew the apostles would say, ah, Oga, so even Jesus says things and it doesn't happen. But Jesus was not moved. When they were coming the next day, the Bible said the tree dried up from its root because Jesus disconnected the source of the tree. And they said, Master, the tree you cursed yesterday, behold, it has dried up from its root. And Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith does not doubt. And in verse 24 of that scripture, Jesus said something. He said, if you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast hands and do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. You see that? It's a principle. We grow by this principle. We learn it. We grow by it. We practice it and we become strong. The second principle of faith is to refuse doubt. The third principle of faith is to always present your strong reasons present your strong reasons the circumstance will want to confront you most of the times if you don't master how to present your strong reasons you will never win in the battle of faith in isaiah chapter 41 verse 21 the bible said produce your cause he said bring forth your strong reasons produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons the bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it said now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen it said by it the elders obtained a good report they were always presenting something in Hosea chapter 14 verse 2 it said carry with you words and turn to the Lord carry with you words if you don't know how to produce your evidence if you don't know how to produce your strong reason your, your, your opponent will paralyze you. Most times the reason people drift into doubt is because they didn't produce their strong reasons. That's why I quoted for you in Romans chapter 10 verse 10. It said, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus will confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. It said, with the heart you believe unto righteousness. But it didn't say stop at believing. It said, to get salvation, you must produce your strong reason. It said, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation your heart makes you right with god your evidence makes you get your result many people don't know how to produce their strong reason this is why we talk and when i teach the laws of faith i will show you the four laws of faith we produce our evidence we produce our strong reason if i ask you today are you a graduate what will you produce you will not go and start telling me the story of how you went to the university you will present your certificate if you have a land that they are arguing who owns this land, you won't carry the land and take it to court. You will produce your land documents. The C of O. That's your land. You have a strong reason. Every time you want to work out your results, you must master the art of producing your strong reason. Are we together? I'm sure you are learning something. And if you will take this to heart, you will change your story forever. The fourth principle of faith is only say what God says <laughs> don't be too vast when you are dealing with faith Reverend Chris Yakilome said something he said I don't know too much to be afraid only say what God says remember I just quoted for you from Romans 10 10 that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation it is what you say you will have the Bible says that God speaking now he said, I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servants and performed the counsel of my messengers. God is not committed to what you know. God is committed to what you say. That was Bishop Oedeko speaking. If you don't say the right thing, you will get the wrong thing. Only say, the Bible said, let no one in Zion say, I am sick. Why is that so? Is it denying the existence of sickness? No. But if you say it, it will manifest because you are of the God class and God walk by talking. Gods walk by talking. Gods don't walk by carrying blocks on their shoulder. 
when a god wants to walk he begins to talk jesus said the words that i speak it is my father that is in me that doeth the work god said let there be light and there was light if you say the wrong things you will have the wrong things be disciplined to only say what god says about you i know this might look like psyching but remember this is built on three other foundations already see the unseen refuse to doubt present your strong reason then only say what god say there are lots of people that have said a million and one things about themselves that god did not say this is why their life is not consistent to the blueprint of their destiny you have told yourself a thousand and one times it's not working how do you expect it to work it will never work because your statement will be brought in the courts of heaven that yourself say is not working so what by what means will it work when you have declared that it will not work because what you don't know is that what you say in the realm of the spirit is a declaration you are declaring that it's not working that's what you are doing so only say what god says concerning you don't say what you feel don't say what you think say what god say it may not be your experience now but keep saying it over time your experiences will conform to it when god said let there let let there be light don't assume light appeared immediately it was in genesis 16 that he made the the, the sun and the moon when god said let the green plant appear in genesis chapter 1 don't expect that it appeared it didn't appear in genesis chapter 2 from verse 3 to 5 the bible said no green plant was on the face of the earth because god has not caused the man to till the land and so there was no mist going to heaven to water the earth to bring the green plant but the bible said god saw it and it was good so god said let the green plant appear there was no green plant nowhere because man had not been created yet god saw it and it was good this is how god's operate only say what god says concerning you if you say what god is not saying you will have what god is not giving if you say what god is not saying you will have what god is not giving only say what god say you must discipline your mouth faith men are disciplined that's why one of the hallmark of maturity is the ability to tame your tongue the bible said see one among you who is perfect he said that man has law over his tongue the guy only says what god says and that's why his results are only consistent with god's result you know if not because moses was the one that wrote genesis chapter one if god was the one who wrote genesis chapter one you would never have heard of darkness it was moses talking to us about darkness when god showed up god didn't go saying ah the darkness on the earth is so thick how come there is so much darkness wow this kind of darkness can anything do happen to it at all that's not god's business god came he said let there be light god says what he wants to see and you say what god say that's the way of victory in genesis chapter 1 verse 3 god didn't see light he wanted light he said let there be light in genesis chapter 1 verse 6 the heavens and the earth was mingled together and god said let the waters be separated and it was separated and the firmament appeared in genesis chapter 9 god didn't see the earth there was no dry ground and god said let the dry ground appear he didn't say oh see why have you swallowed the dry ground how do we get the dry ground dry ground appear and the dry ground appeared in genesis chapter 16 there was no light upon the face of the earth to determine seasons god said let the sun and the moon appear and let there be for season he didn't say oh how are we going to have season can it be possible for us to have season it's babes that talk like that god don't talk like that in genesis chapter 26 there was no man on the face of the earth to till the earth god said let us make man in our own image god says what he wants to see not what he's thinking not what he's hoping for not what he feels will not happen he says what he wants to happen if you want to live the victorious life you must be disciplined to only say what god says about your circumstance instead of continually and i'm not saying deny the facts that's not my point faith is not the denial of fact it is the refusal of fact to have dominion over you and the way to refuse fact from having dominion is by saying what god says that's how you refuse fact from having dominion so these are four principles of faith now these four principles of faith they are designed to make the fifth principle happen because the fifth principle is actually the major principle of faith but this fifth principle will never work 
until the first four principles are already in motion what is the fifth principle of faith be specific always faith does not function in oblivion faith is not vague faith is definite faith is specific so that the power can be channeled correctly you don't box the wind when you are doing business of faith you are specific about what you are addressing many people want to work out the protocol of faith but they are vague they are not deliberate they are not specific they are not definite that's why they never have results if you are not specific you will never have results in mark chapter 11 verse 23 which is the scripture popularly known as Kenan Hagin scripture the Bible said if you will say to this mountain this mountain he didn't say if you will say to a mountain he didn't say if you will say to mountains if you will say to this mountain what does that tell you it tells you that faith does not deny the fact faith knows that the mountain is there faith acknowledges the mountain that's why you exercise your faith in the first place if you don't acknowledge the mountain you are a liar you are not a man of faith but you acknowledge the mountain notwithstanding you don't allow the mountain have dominion so he said specifically address the mountain say to this mountain be thou removed that's another specificity tell the mountain what you want be thou removed and be thou cast hence so you see the level of specificity you address this mountain and then in addressing the mountain you tell the mountain what you want you can't just come you are not yet married and then you want to get married and you say lord look at my circumstance oh lord change my circumstance what circumstance lord i am not married thank you father in the name of the lord jesus i step into my husband's home you are not just going to say lord help me lord please deal with this matter lord am i not serving you faithful enough lord what have i done you are wasting your time this year i am getting married this year i'm getting into my husband's house and there's nothing any devil can do about it what have you done you have timed when you want your result you have specified what you want to get married and you have told yourself you are going into your husband your husband's house specificity the contract is mine because i am of the lord i have victory i have dominion i take the contract for the land in the name of the lord jesus and i'm going to establish that place that's how men of faith speak we are deliberate we are specific we don't speak into thin air we don't box the wind we don't box the wind so the first thing about the principle of specificity is that don't deny the mountain but address it number two in addressing the mountain tell the mountain what you want if you want the mountain to de dematerialize tell the mountain in the name of the lord jesus i command you to dematerialize if you want the mountain to be removed tell the mountain in the name of the lord jesus be removed from here if you want the mountain to vanish say in the name of the lord jesus i command you to vanish oh mountain of cancer oh mountain of poverty oh mountain of backwardness oh mountain of rejection in the name of the lord jesus i command you your stronghold is broken from my life from this day leave me in the name of jesus that's a man of faith specificity so first don't deny the mountain but address it secondly in addressing the mountain tell the mountain what you want it to do and then thirdly when you are addressing the mountain address the mountain in the name of jesus i know you have heard stories of men like a.a a. allen who came and said i am a.a a. allen and demons left that's a.a a. allen he has a covenant with god he has a dealing with god that makes it happen but the general principle for our victory has been outlined he said pray in my name in john 16 24 the bible said until now you have asked for nothing ask that you might receive that your joy may be complete so god wants you to to have joy god wants you to live a victorious life but he has shown you how he said ask before you receive so don't assume i know what you want and say if it is the will of god it will happen if it will happen it will happen you are joking god himself is telling you if you want it to happen ask and then asking in first john chapter 1 chapter 5 verse 14 he said if we ask according to your will if we ask according to your will you are able faithful and just to provide for us all that we have asked so first 
you ask second you ask according to his will now what is his will in asking his will in asking is not going to find the mystery behind the principle that that holds this thing bound no all of that has been addressed by the blood of jesus and i will teach it when i begin to teach about generational covenants i will tell you when the high priest takes the the blood to the holy of holies the bible said the blood of the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world so the testimony of the blood predates the covenant of your ancestors the blood is a reality that holds sway from before the foundation of the world so the high priest steps into before the foundation of the world when jesus took the blood to heaven he was entering into a dimension called before the foundation of the world so i don't care if that generational covenant have existed for 50 years it doesn't matter the blood is before the foundation of the world so when we are talking about the will of god we are not talking about the mysteries of transferring causes and all of that i will deal with it over time i will deal with it i will teach you all of this so that i do a thorough job and it doesn't look as if i'm heretic or i'm trying to play down on something but i will show you if you know the mystery that powers that backs your authority in jesus you will be bold any day any time but coming back to what we are saying is if we ask according to his will first john 5 14 now what is his will this is his will in john 16 13 he said if you ask whatever you ask in my name so the will of god is for you to ask in his name this is also the law of specificity don't ask in vain ask in the name of jesus john 16 verse 13 to 14 and in john 16 23 to 24 to, to in verse john 16 26 rather he said i didn't tell you i will pray to the father on your behalf so many people who come to ask through jesus who come to ask through mary who come to ask through an angel who come to ask through a saint go and read john 16 26. even jesus himself is saying i'm not saying i will pray to the father for you he said for the father himself have loved you he said ask in my name what it means to ask in his name is that you are asking in his stead that means you are standing in his stead so you are not going through you are standing as him that's what it means to ask in his name so in the principle of faith under the law of specificity we must ask in the name of jesus and when we do that we are ready for victory so the principle of faith is the victory that a man has as he walks through life and it's simple first focus on reality secondly refuse to doubt thirdly present your strong reasons fourthly only say what god says and finally be specific if you apply this principle to any situation in your life trust me it will change in the new testament dispensation we are the first prophets of our lives the reason why we are running helter skelter looking for somebody to change our circumstance is because we don't know the principles that govern this if you know this you'll be victorious i was in in the rcn tent two days ago and even yesterday when my father and the lord was doing sanitization and dealing with um deliverance cases there were over a thousand people online and out of this over one thousand people one thousand people one thousand people were going through crisis now we give god thanks for delivering them for the sanitization that happened but it, it grieves the heart it shows us how many babes they are in christ so many people are still babes so when we conduct deliverance services we thank god that we have exercised dominion over devils but the will of god is not deliverance the deliverance like salvation is necessary in bringing you to the will of god the will of god is not delivered jesus was casting out demons everywhere because the guys were not born again they were babes in the things of the spirit how many times did jesus cast out demons from his disciples they didn't need it so there is a realm you get to where you don't need deliverance there's a realm you get to where you don't need to talk about deliverance you don't need to talk about devils where is that realm is when you walk in light when paul was writing to the church in ephesus they were mature Paul was not dealing with issues of deliverance. He was teaching them rather how to hold the devil at bay, how to stop the devil. That's what he taught them spiritual warfare, to keep the devil where he belongs. 
because he had told them giving no place to the devil so these ones are not trusting god to deliver them over these ones can stand and march shoulder to shoulder with the devil and say you devil stop there that's where god wants every one of us to get to not coming to god seeking breakthrough or seeking deliverance or seeking healing no if you are dead it's fine we have we, there is a fight of faith once in a while i'm still growing i have my own fight of faith that i'm dealing with but i know the standard of god so if paraventure i fall sick today now there are those who don't fall sick i can't remember when i fell sick so don't get me wrong now but if paraventure i fall sick maybe malaria or typhoid today i'm going to exercise my faith right but i also know there is a realm called divine health where people don't fall sick that's where i'm going to that i fall sick i'm not going to come and start teaching people and say ah oh, no ah we all fall sick we all fall sick that's a lie we all don't fall sick the bible says if you are sick go to the elder the elders don't fall sick because if the elders fall sick who should they go to you can't come and say well all of us fail once in a while no he said the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so it's from glory to glory it's from brightness to brightness the problem with us most of the time is we preach our experience as god's standard and that's wrong there is a place there's a realm in god where we don't fluctuate we only go upward and forward because it's brighter and brighter that's the realm of faith and every one of us is practicing. Every one of us is building our faith. Every one of us is developing our faith. And this is the cure. Myself teaching you this thing today. If you practice this thing better than me, in few months you'll be ahead of me. Because it's not who taught it that makes the difference. It's who practices it that has the victory. It says strong meat belongs to them. Hebrews 5.14 Who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. So tonight you have a challenge around your finances, around your health, around your family. The first thing to do is what has God said about this? What, you are, what are you trying to do? You are trying to see the unseen. When you see what God says, refuse to doubt. The Bible says concerning Abraham that according as he has spoken, that was where Abraham stood. Abraham stood where the voice of God stood. And then you refuse to doubt. And then when you refuse to doubt, that thing that God has said, begin to present it as your strong reason. And as you present it as your strong reason, begin to say only that thing. Even if your circumstance begin to rage, begin to rage, it's a lie. Refuse to consider. The devil will rage to distract you. Keep saying what you are saying and be specific. And in your specificity, begin to command that thing to get out. In the name of Jesus, you will be amazed. Tonight, I want us to apply this very briefly. I'm not feeling an anointing. And I'm not going to operate by word of knowledge. So you say, okay, word of knowledge, there's a gift of the spirit at work, or there's an anointing. No, we are going to put this to work now. Um, how many persons are online now? We have 1,222 people on Facebook. We have people on YouTube as well. Online, right? Now, I, I'm, I'm going to exercise this now with 1,200 people minimum. Now, this is what you're going to do. There is a challenge you have been going through. Put that challenge before you now. Remember, I'm not feeling any anointing. I'm not using any gift of the spirit. I'm not picking anything in my spirit. I deliberately came like this today. If this is true, let it happen. The Bible said in Mark 16, 20, and they went and spoke the word. And he said, the Lord confirming the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done by their hands. Mark 16, 20. And in Acts 14, 14 verse 3, it's a long time about this, speaking boldly in the Lord, the Lord confirming the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done by their hand. The beauty of what we're about to do tonight is that you will not only get an instant result, but you will now know what to do. If I cast a demon out of you, I deal with the circumstance. I've not really helped you because in Matthew 12, 43, 44, the Bible said when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he moves about in dry places, seeking where it will abide. He said, finding none, it returns to where it was cast from. If he finds it kept and garnished, but empty, he will not enter. 
he will go and get seven more wicked demons. He said, worse will be the state of that man than the beginning thereof. So if I do a deliverance, if I conduct a deliverance on you and I didn't follow up with discipleship, I set you up, your situation will be worse. That's why six months later you will discover you have not only gone back to that addiction, it is worse now. You have not only gone back to that sickness, it is worse now. The reason is because you were washed, kept and garnished, but you were empty. If we teach you truth, you will discover you will reign in life. And it's simple. Let's put it to work in the next five minutes and take some testimonies. Can you bring me online? I want to see the testimonies. I'm so persuaded in my spirit, God will do something. Maybe you are blind. Maybe you are deaf. Maybe there is pain somewhere in your body. Maybe you have an organ infection. Maybe there is a circumstance you are trusting God for a, a change. Just put it before you now. I'm teaching you how to put it before you. Just chant with me. Keyboard, I want them to hear it where they are. Now, if your circumstance is a sickness, he said, By his stripes you were healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5 in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says by whom stripes you were healed in Romans 8 11 it says if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you he will quicken your mortal body I'm giving you raw materials now by his stripes you were healed now he just, just, just bring it to your visualization when Jesus was being flogged he did it for you when he cried, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, that was your sickness he was dealing with. So if it were your sickness, now shift from your sickness. Look at what Jesus did. That the Son of Man was made manifest. That he may destroy the works of the devil. That's what's happening in the, in the spirit. The Son of Man, for this reason, was the Son of Man made manifest. That he may destroy the works of the devil. It was Andrew Womack that said the power of God is mechanical because he can replicate it every day. He believes it. Yours may be a family crisis. Yours may be a job. Yours may be a contract you are bidding for. Yours may be a land. Your land is being taken away. They are trying to, to rob you of what's yours. this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith do you believe this is the victory that overcomes the world every area of darkness in your light here in your spirit is a light be and light appeared this is the victory this is the victory that overcomes the world now you are about to say what God says are you blind are you deaf are you in the hospital listening to me is there a crisis? It's time to address it. Go ahead and command that thing to go now. So you growth in my body, you deafness, you blindness. In the name of Jesus, I command you, leave my body now. Leave now. Command that devil of confusion out of my family. That demon of backwardness out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Command it to go now. Command it to go now. No anointing feeling, no word of knowledge, nothing. Command it to go in the name of Jesus. Don't bother about what you are.
are talking to. You be in the spirit. Remember, your focus must be in reality. So don't focus on that thing. Focus in the spirit and just be addressing that thing from heaven. Pain, go in the name of Jesus. Blindness, go. I command devils of blindness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Brood upon your people now. Move upon the waters, Holy Spirit. And quicken your word and bring it to pass. Let the testimony of your word be made sure tonight. Aya lavada kazoa. Elege degea. Barakida pande seleva. Ela soba na teka sila bariana tai. Kalevane kazede. Ede de kapole baradaga vagia. Ala branda si bata. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the miracles begin to take place. In the name of Jesus. I command blinding spirits, go. Go from them in the name of Jesus. Break the chain of blindness. I command deafening spirits, go. I command organ infections right now. Kidneys, livers, be healed in Jesus. I command the chains to break in the name of Jesus. I command healing in your finances. Every dry hand receive resources and receive sufficiency. I command every affliction standing before you in the name of the Lord Jesus, go down. Command arthritis pains, go. I command bones, be healed. I command organs, be healed. You couldn't walk before, rise up and walk. I command growths to vanish from your bodies. I command cancerous growths, go. Every form of growth, growths in the breast, Go, pile, go. In the name of Jesus, I command minds to be restored. I command healings to take place. I command circumstances to turn around. I command speed on your life. Oh, every pain in the leg, every pain in the ankle, every pain in the joint, I cannot but see. And since somebody, your pain under your foot, it's like you step on something very hard and the pain has been there. The pain is going in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing injuries that have refused to heal. One on somebody's lips, another on his ankle. is drying in the name of Jesus. It's drying. I'm seeing a man, you have issues with diabetes. It's a sugar infection. It's been there for close to eight years. You are slim, tall, dark. You are close to your forties. That affliction breaks now in the name of Jesus. Somebody, you can't lift your hand. There is a growth in your armpit. The pain goes down. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing somebody with arthritis on both legs. Your legs are literally drying up now. You are a female. Stand up and begin to walk in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing somebody with pain in the tummy. For three days now, you've not even been able to walk. There have been excruciating pain that have defied pain relievers. The pain is living now. You are free in the name of Jesus. I don't want to, I don't want to operate in the spirit like this. But God is healing people. Circumstances are turning around. They are turning around. You are receiving your healing already. Please begin to write in your testimonies. Some of you prayed, you have not seen any results. Don't worry. Don't worry. You are growing. You are growing. And for everybody trusting God for an intervention now, take it in the name of Jesus. Rabakata for Adaha. Zelia Banakila Barakade. Vadia Fatevreta. Zelia Panakira. I release the power of God now. I release that intervention. Take it in the name of Jesus. Ah! Women are receiving grace to take it. You are receiving strength to be with child. You have been married. This is close to, it's more than five years now. You have not been able to bring forth a child. He said, and the spirit of the Lord came upon her. And the power of the highest overshadowed her. And something was formed on her inside. He said, Sarah receives strength to be a child. Receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. Aye. I'm seeing a woman with a young boy. The eyes are bulging out. You are afraid it's cancer. That devil goes down. That devil goes down. In the name of Jesus, that child is free. Oh yeah. I'm seeing somebody. One of your breasts is bigger than the other. It's an affliction of the devil. 
there's a an implantation on it creating it's a terrible situation that breast is being healed right now that breast have just reduced in size you have been healed in the name of jesus and since somebody your dad could not walk you are bringing your dad now to hear that the man of god is praying i release strength upon him he's wearing a short nicker like ash color yes receive strength take that staff away from him rise up and walk in the name of jesus you are free in jesus name Somebody has you have this there's a fracture around your waist at the back it's on your spine actually now you are using a belt to tie yourself to be able to walk remove it you are free somebody else has a fracture on the neck lumbar spondylosis remove that thing now you are free in the name of jesus oh jesus somebody's left ear just open now now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hey the anointing is resting now receive your healings everybody connected to this platform right now i release power for healing i command devils of infirmities go from them i release the life of god right now i command impossible situation turn around in the name of jesus hey somebody has a skin infection your knees like the knee of a goat right now you don't even know what's happening to you and these dark spots are appearing in you everywhere itching you so embarrassing the lord is cleansing you now you are being cleansed by the spirit To families now there are crises in your families i'm seeing a young lady watching me right now you are about 23 years old in the last four years five years four persons have died in your family two of them are from your immediate family one is an uncle another is a, a cousin a cousin four persons have died in the last five years now the plague and darkness over families i command it to be rolled off everybody commit connected now in the name of the lord jesus i step into your family by the spirit and i command that wickedness of the devil roll off in the name of jesus i rebuke the spirit of death i say begin to flourish begin to flourish i'm even seeing a young man now there have been three deaths in your home you are a pastor you are a pastor you pastor a church but there's something about it like light you are pastoring a church and three deaths in your home in the last five years and there have been confusion it looks as if nothing is working it looks as if you are at one spot it's that wickedness from your ancestry that is finding a place in what you are doing and in the name of the lord jesus i join faith with you i command that siege to break off your life and your ministry the affliction comes to me and think somebody from town. A gross affliction of poverty and rejection. It's so strong, so strong in your life that it looks as if everybody rejects you. Meanwhile, it's fighting your life and ministry. I bring you the witness of favor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into a higher realm of favor. Step into a higher dimension of favor. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing a young man. You are about to start a ministry. You are about to start a ministry. 
but you are contemplating going into diabolic means because you are afraid it won't work. The reason is because your father was into ministry, your grandfather was into ministry, but they were poor. And you say you will not do ministry with poverty. I have good news for you. There is a seed of greatness upon your life. And tonight I activate it by the Spirit. You are in the western part of Nigeria. Somewhere around Oshun, Oshun State, Badon Axis. I release grace upon you. I break that seed. I'm, oh, oh my God. I'm seeing somebody with the same case somewhere around Enugu State of Nigeria. It just dropped in my spirit now. You will not go into diabolism, but you will do ministry and flourish like the cedars in the name of Jesus. Can we take some testimonies? Others are still exercising their faith. Do we have testimonies already? Bring testimonies. Others are still exercising their faith. The Bible said the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You may not have received yours now. Come on, don't doubt. Keep exercising your faith. As you hear the testimony of one, faith will be built on your inside. Meanwhile, for those of you that have testimonies, we had lots of testimonies from last week. For those of you that have testimonies, send it to this number on WhatsApp. Plus 234-80-3220-1096. We want to reach out to you, we want to pray with you to consolidate on your on, on what you have received. Plus two three four plus two three four eight zero three two two zero one zero nine six. Forward your testimony there. Can we have anybody on the technical unit? Let me get testimonies quickly. Just two, three testimonies, and then we are out of here because time is fast spent. Can I have testimonies? Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Yes, let me hear that. Ndia, we pain is gone from your back already. Root, I've just been healed of eye, con eye pain and headache. Testimonies are already streaming in. Mike, I've been seeing black spots in his eyes with excruciating pain. He's been healed. Testimonies are already coming in and they will keep flowing like that. Yes, I gave a word of knowledge. Somebody had pain at the back of the waist. Kojo is testifying, said the pain is gone completely. The bones. Okay, he had issues with his bones and he couldn't, he, there was no mobility or something. He can exercise it right now. That bone receives strength in the name of Jesus. That bone receives strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody else with pains in the bone, bone condition, being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So there are lots of testimonies coming in already. Keep streaming them in. Remember, the testimony line is plus 234 plus 234-80-3220-1096. When I'm led, I'll begin to release them, but send in your testimonies. Let's give glory to God. Let's give glory to God. Thank you, Father, for tonight. We are persuaded that much more are happening, and they will yet happen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Even the people that will be following this live stream, listening to it later, this dimension will come upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, okay, Kolola, I gave a word of knowledge of a lady that has, is about 23 years old, four deaths in the last five years. Kolola, so, Kolola who? Kolola Benjamin, victorious. Is affirming to that word of knowledge that plague of death seizes over your family. The fear of death is rebuked from you. You will not die. You will proclaim the glory of the you will proclaim the goodness of God in the land of the living. You know, some of these words of knowledge are just to help the faith of people. These principles I've taught you, they are eternal. Take for example, when you come to a man of God to pray for you, is this same principle you refuse to practice that we apply? You may have an ancestral challenge, you may have a pattern in your bloodline. When you meet the man of God, he will invoke the blood of Jesus. He will use the name of Jesus. It's the same things you have refused to practice. That's what the man of God uses. Because that's the only way out. Go and practice today. 
and change your story forever testimonies keep streaming in please let the testimonies keep streaming in let them keep streaming in send them to the numbers and then we we'll, 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 we even forgot to take the testimonies from last week the lord bless you the lord cause his face to shine upon you the lord lift up his countenance above you the lord give you peace this week shall be the greatest week you have experienced in your lifetime you will experience the glory of God, you will experience the favor of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are trusting God for a breakthrough and it's an emergency. It has to do with a visa application, it has to do with a job. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, I release it unto you. In the name of Jesus, it will come to pass speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for making our time to be with me. By next week, Thursday, I will round up this series by teaching you the laws of faith. Please put these things to work. The power is in the practice. If you don't practice, you will never gain mastery. You will always be a babe. Strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. When we started, I told you I wasn't feeling any anointing. There was no word of knowledge. But there was the word of faith. And if there is a word of faith, it's as potent, as powerful, as an anointing, it's as powerful as a gift of the Spirit. The word of faith which we preach. God bless you. I love And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is touched, it will be purged. When you come back, you can become a prophet.